Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel's television. A reminder of our top stories. Six inmates, including two accused of allegedly from Senator Dino Milaye, escaped from prison in Kogi State as police threatens to declare Senator Milaye and others wanted. Senator Milaye asked police to produce two persons accused of arms possession, vows to sue the Inspector General of Police for alleged intimidation, harassment and blackmail. The National Assembly passes the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill, seeking to provide for the governance and institutional framework for the petroleum industry. And US President Donald Trump says that he is keen to meet Kim Jong-un after the North Korean leader's trip to China. ChannelsTV.com has more information for you. And on YouTube.com forward slash channels web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. A federal high court in Abuja has given Senator Einaya Abaribe and two others standing as shorties for the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Nandi Kanu, up till June the 26th to show cause why they should not forfeit the bail bond of 300 million naira due to Kanu's continued absence in court. At a resumed court hearing on the senator's bail bond, lawyer to Senator Abaribe opposes the hearing of the suit on the grounds that his client has not been served with the order of the court to that effect. He further informs the court that until Senator Abaribe is served with the order, he cannot be asked to show cause why he should forfeit the bail bond. The courtroom is filled to capacity as lawyers and sympathizers of Mr. Namdikanu converge on the Federal High Court Abuja to witness proceedings in the case against Senator Abaribe, who is acting as a surety with two others to the leader of indigenous people of Biafra, who is standing trial for alleged terrorism. In commencing proceedings, the prosecutor informs the court of the continued absence of Inamdikanu in court and argues that the shorties must show cause as to why they should not forfeit their bail bond of 300 million naira for failing to produce the defendant. Lawyer to Senator Abaribe opposes the argument on the ground that his client has not received a summon or order of the court to that effect. With that short criminal trial where the, the, the accused is presumed innocent cannot go on. So the fine gentleman like the senator who has now facilitated the court trial by being a shorty, we are saying that if there is an order for him to show us, that order ought to be served on him. So when he now is served, he will now get prepared and enter defense and explain to the court his stand. That order has not been enrolled and served on them. The prosecutor, however, insists that the defense team is only frustrating the progress of the case, as Mr. Namdikanu has absconded from his trial. But the lawyer to Mr. Kanu disagrees with the prosecutor as he claims that his client must have been abducted by agent of the state. The justice of this matter is just very simple. You've stood surety for someone and you aided his escape. Now come to the court and show cause. Today you file an application. Tomorrow you are saying the court didn't order you to show cause. Now the court has given an order for them to come and show cause. We are here formally to present the facts, matters, stating unequivocally that his presence was invaded and he was abducted because he hadn't been seen since 14th of September 2017. That's what we are here to. And until they produce him in court, the trial cannot go on. With the hearing of the suit stalled, Justice Binta Inyaku adjourned the case to the 26th of June as she ordered the prosecutor to ensure service of the court order on Senator Abaribe, who is expected to show cause why he should not forfeit his bail bond or go to jail for his inability to produce in Namdi Kanu. 
Ahead of a planned protest of lawyers and other civil society groups against the land use charge of the Lagos State Government, the chairman of the Nigeria Bar Association, Ikeja Branch, Mr. Adeshina Ogunlano, says that he is holed up at the Bar's branch center at Ikeja. In the telephone conversation with Channel's Television's judiciary correspondent, Shola Shuele, a few minutes ago, Mr. Ogunlano confirmed that over 50 policemen had laid siege at the Bar Center since 4 p.m., ostensibly to arrest him. He said he has reached out to members of his exco and other members of the Bar and the branch who turned up in large numbers to prevent his arrest. He explained that when police authorities noticed this, they promptly sent a letter written by the Commissioner of Police, Lagos, Ibohimi Edgo, asking him to report to the police. Mr. Ogulano, who said that he received the letter at 6.30 p.m., explains that he saw through the plan of the police to arrest him, and he subsequently sent word out that the police commissioner should instead come to the bar center to address him and the lawyers gathered there. Mr. Ogulano, however, says that the planned protest would go on as scheduled tomorrow at the bar center of the Keja branch at 2 p.m. You're watching News Track on channels, the news at 10, rather, on channels television, reaching you live from Lagos. Quickly shift our gears to our Buja studios now, where Ibrahim Adra is standing by to take us through. Ibrahim. Hello, Kimba. Now, the Federal High Court in Kaduna has struck out a suit filed by the embattled former chairman of Pension Reform Task Team, Mr. Abdurashid Maina, against the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Mena had, on November the 14th, 2017, sued the anti-graft agency for what he describes as the commission's ineligibility to carry out its functions on the grounds that the 2004 EFCC Act is an illegality. In the petition he filed through his lawyer, Mohamed Katu, Mr. Mena urged the court to declare as null and void the EFCC Act of 2004. He also prayed the court to restrain the EFCC or any other security agency from arresting him over allegations of corruption. Mena had gone to court after he was declared wanted by the EFCC for allegedly diverting recovered pension funds while serving as chairman of the pension reform task team. At the previous hearings, counsel to EFCC and attorney general of the federation filed a preliminary objection, arguing that the federal high court in Kaduna lacks jurisdiction to entertain the matter. Delivering his judgment today, Justice Shuaibu struck out Mena's suit for lack of substantial evidence to back his claims. And still on legal matters, a federal high court sitting in Lagos has ordered the temporary forfeiture of the sum of 11 million and 40,000 naira suspected to be proceeds of crime and diverted from the Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency in Nimasa. The money was recovered from a company owned by a former Maritime Guard commander in the Nigerian Navy, Captain Ebony Emmanuel Aneke. The FCC also secured an order of interim forfeiture of a three-bedroom terrace duplex, uh, duplex located at Lecky Gardens Estate, said to belong to another maritime guard commander in the Nigerian Navy, one Captain Olutu Olumuiwa Morakinho, and another five-bedroom duplex also in the Lecky area belonging to Captain Aneke. Justice Muslim Hassan granted the orders following an ex parte application made by an EFCC prosecutor, Idris Muhammad. The investigator also stated that a Nimasa Committee of Anti-Piracy Logistics opened and maintained a bank account which was administered by the Maritime Guard Command. The case has been adjourned till April the 16th. Now, if Nigeria intends to achieve sustainable economic growth, then the country must begin to aggressively take the issue of human capital development seriously. This view is part of suggestions by participants at an event organized by budget in Lagos tagged investing in the people of Nigeria. Nigeria will thrive when every Nigerian is able to thrive. If you invest in their health, education and opportunities, the human capital, that will lay the foundation for sustained prosperity. American billionaire and philanthropist Bill Gates speaking at the expanded National Economic Council meeting last week in Abuja, the federal capital territory. His remarks at that gathering have continued to generate reactions in several quarters across the country. 
And this perhaps explains the reason for this youth event in Lagos, organized by budget themed investing in the people of Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria needs to put more investment in health, education, and most especially in the people of Nigeria. We can have all the health, all the education, but if the youth that is being targeted as a conversation for a generation do not even know that they need to take that responsibility more seriously, we need to get to work. According to Debola Williams, co-founder of Red Media, it's time for the government at all levels to prioritize human capital development. It's a country like Nigeria that has the highest number of young people, then policies by the government of the day should be tailored more to its highest demographic in population. Speaker after speaker take turns to emphasize the gains of human capital development in nation building. Education cannot happen in an atmosphere of insecurity. So as an example, in the states that have been under the Boko Haram course for a long time, enrollment rates in schools have fallen, no, they've not fallen, they've plummeted. There's a difference. And it's really sad because that's a 20-year problem. Investing in healthcare is not just about buying MRI machines or buying CT scans. It's investing in the people, the health professionals. Science research and development is important. The audience is not just the listening type. They actively participate, harping more on the subject matter. If I ask this question, how many of us here have a PVC? How many of us have a PVC? You find out that the number is minimal. So what is the way forward? What we can do is this. If we have an issue where a political leader isn't getting it right, we need to put ourselves together and send him out of that place. Nigeria is currently right dealing now, with a high rate of youth unemployment, standing at 21.73% from 2014 to 2017. No doubt, paying more attention to this group of citizens may birth a new dawn for the nation developmental outlook. Well, that's all from Abuja. We return to our Lagos studio where Gimba is standing by for the rest of News at 10. Gimba. Brilliant, Ibrahim. Our Kano State Ministry of Health has confirmed the death of eight people from meningitis in Dungurawa community of Dawaikin Tofa local government area of the state. The State Commissioner for Health, Kabiru Getso, says that 24 hours response team has been activated while the state government has already procured vaccines worth millions of naira to control the situation. Six other persons who have contracted meningitis are said to be undergoing treatment at a government-owned hospital. According to the Commissioner, this is not the first time that Kano State is recording a type A meningitis. When the news at 10 returns, Central Bank of Nigeria is set to hold its first Monetary Policy Committee meeting for 2018, as five recently confirmed members assume duty. That's on Business News. Join us again. <laughs>